Hi, this is John with the Everyday Bible Study, and we're going through a booklet talking about the amazing life of Jesus Christ, and ironically, that's what the name of the booklet is. It's The Amazing Life of Jesus Christ. It's from World Missionary Press, and if you'd like to get a copy, just type in World Missionary Press into uh, your um, uh, search engine that you use, be it Google or Yahoo or Baidu or whatever, and uh, bring that up. It's a website in the United States, and they print these booklets with the gospel. They'll send them to you wherever you're at in the world. And they're very glad to send you a copy of this booklet. It uh, can be in your native language if your native language is not English. And uh, they print them in a number of different languages. They print a number of different books in a number of different languages. And they'll be glad to send you any of those, as many as you want, uh, for free. And if you have financial means to be able to support this ministry, uh, they gladly accept donations. That way they can print millions of these booklets every year and send them all over the world. But if uh, you're, you're of limited income and you're poor and you can't afford to do that, uh, you can still uh, receive free copies of this so that you can share them with your friends and neighbors and lead them into salvation. Lead them to know Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. Well, we're looking at uh, the life of Jesus Christ and uh, we're looking here, uh, Jesus actually had prophesied that he would end up dying for our sins. And then we're going to see this come to pass. We're going to see that Jesus is betrayed and arrested. And he gave up his life freely. He uh, actually, uh, the Jews, uh, Jewish leaders, had made multiple attempts to try to kill Jesus Christ prior to this point. But he did not uh, die until it was his time to die. But he gave up his life freely uh, so that uh, he may die for the sins of the world. We're going to look at Mark uh, chapter 14 verses 10 and 11a. It says here, Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, and he had twelve apostles that were his primary followers that went with him everywhere he went, went to the chief priest to betray him, to betray them. So when they heard it, uh, they were glad and promised to give him money. And uh, Judas actually uh, there at the Passover dinner had Satan enter into him and he was possessed by Satan himself uh, if you can imagine how terrible that is and uh, the works of Satan were being done and he went to the chief priest and uh, developed a plan to betray Jesus uh, so that they could arrest him and uh, they had to have a pretty much a, a small army uh, prepared to arrest Jesus and um, Judas actually told them, the chief priest, that they, he would identify Jesus with a kiss. And uh, so that way they knew that they were getting the right guy. I've got to get a little sip of uh, tea here. I've been talking a lot, doing these Bible studies, and my mouth is getting dry. Uh, now we're going to look at another passage. This is from the book of Matthew. And uh, this is from Matthew 26, chapter, verses 36 and 37 and 39. It says here, Jesus came with them to the place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and that's James and John. And he went, uh, began to become sorrowful and deeply distressed. He knew what was going to happen. He knew how bad his crucifixion was going to be as he was praying. And he went a little farther and he fell on his face and prayed saying, Oh, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I have willed, but you will. And this was so distressful for Jesus that the Bible tells us in another passage that as he prayed, drops of blood would be formed on his skin. And basically the capillaries were bursting because he was probably having, under so much distress, his blood pressure was so high that his, his body was actually starting to be destroyed prior to the crucifixion because uh, the stress was just overwhelming knowing that he was going to have not just this physical death of the crucifixion having nails put into his hands and into his feet and nailed to the cross and hung uh, before man uh, but um, he knew that he was going to have the sins of the world fall upon him sins of all mankind through all the ages and that uh, that was going to be so distressful that would that was probably what actually caused his death. Uh, Jesus died in a very short period of time on the cross. Uh, once he was crucified, he only took six hours to die. 
and uh, it would often take people um, a few days to die. But uh, Jesus had the sins of the world fall upon him. The wrath of God fall upon him for all those sins. And uh, the pain and the punishment was beyond anything that we could comprehend. Now, we're looking here at John uh, chapter 18, verses 2 and 12. And it says here, Then Judas, having uh, received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, uh, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Then this detachment of troops and the captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. So we see that they were worried that there was going to be a great uprising. They knew that Jesus was very powerful being God. And they didn't realize that he was going to give his life freely. And uh, the Bible tells us that he could have come against those troops and uh, said that he could have dispatched um, a legion of angels, or I think 12 legions of angels. And a legion is somewhere between 3,000 and 7,000. And um, I'd say typically 5,000. So imagine if he had 60,000 angels at his disposal coming against those troops. They couldn't have uh, withstood that. And there are many times in the Bible where um, God actually used angels to fight for the Israeli people. I think he may have done that in modern times, possibly when the, they were outnumbered in, uh, in the city, nation of Israel. But... Uh, uh, he, could, he had that at his disposal, but he gave his life up freely and did not resist their arrest. And, uh, but, uh, now, the Bible tells us one thing that's very interesting. Um, they ask, uh, after Judas had kissed him, what his name was. And he told them, uh, Jesus of Nazareth. And basically, when he told the crowd his name, uh, his power was so immense that everybody that heard him say that fell backwards. Uh, but uh, he didn't actually resist uh, being arrested. And um, uh, Jesus had immense power, but he gave his life up freely because he knew that we needed that. He knew that we would die and go to hell without the salvation that he was getting ready to provide for us. And next we say, see here, Mark uh, chapter 14, verses 55 and 56, and said, And the chief priest and all the council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death and found none, for there were many false witnesses against him. Uh, but their testimonies did not agree. So when Jesus was brought to trial, um, then uh, they tried to bring up charges, but uh, he was sinless. He had nothing that they could condemn him with. Uh, had committed no sins, no minor sins, let alone major sins, uh, that would lead to a death penalty. And they tried to uh, trump up false witnesses against him at the trial. Kangaroo court that they put together in the middle of the night, which, is, which was against the Jewish law. And, uh, but they uh, were unable to uh, even get the witnesses to agree with each other because he was innocent. And uh, he was treated... Uh, with great hate and great despise. But he gave up his life freely uh, for us so that he could die for our sins, he could redeem our sins, could become the sacrificial lamb for our sins, and that he bled his blood, and his blood is applied to us, is made to the point where uh, God looks at our sins, and he does not see the sins, but he sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And uh, our sins are seen no more. They're cast as far as east is uh, from the west. The Bible says that our heart is made white as snow because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And the fact that his righteousness is imputed to us as a Christian. And would you like to have his righteousness imputed to you? Uh, would you like him to save you from your sins that would lead to your death? Uh, now, he's the only way to heaven. Uh, mankind uh, actually... Uh, Satan came to destroy mankind, uh, came to do away with mankind, and uh, he's had mankind under sin for thousands of years. And you are still under sin, you're still under the penalty of death, and you still end up, uh, uh, in once you die, uh, facing hell and the same judgment that Satan himself faces, unless you have Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. 
But if you have Jesus as your Savior and Lord, He saves you from your sin. And uh, you're seeing, the uh, Bible tells us that we are made the righteousness of God. Isn't that wonderful? And not because of anything that you did or anything that I did, but it's because what Jesus did for us when He died upon that cross. And if you have faith in Him, then you can be saved and born again and released from that sin, forgiven of that sin, and you could be made pure in the eyes of God and that way that you could be made a child of God and uh, so that eternal life can be yours and that you don't have to face hell, but you can uh, be with God in heaven for eternity. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today and thank you for uh, this great thing that Jesus has done for us. And he was betrayed and he was arrested, uh, but he went willingly and he could destroy every soldier that they had and all of those uh, Jewish officials, but he decided not to. He decided that he was going to give up his life freely so that mankind may be saved. And Lord, we thank you for the salvation. Thank you for what Jesus did. And Lord, we pray that many people will watch this today and will believe that Jesus Christ died for their sins and that he rose again from death and rose conquering over Satan and death and sin. And he has the power to save each and every man and woman who puts their faith in him. And uh, Lord, we pray that many will put their faith in him and believe that he died for their sins, believe that he rose from the dead, and that he offers salvation for each and every one who believes. The Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. So Lord, we pray that many people will believe and gain salvation and that they will be forgiven of their sins, and that they will live for Jesus Christ and be part of his kingdom forever. Uh, this we pray in Christ's name. Amen. We hope you believed, and we hope that you were born again by the power of Jesus Christ. Uh, so share this message, and um, uh, subscribe to our channel up on YouTube. Uh, these uh, videos that you're watching, uh, you may see them on Facebook or different platforms, but they're hosted on YouTube. And if you go to the YouTube channel, uh, that I'm on, uh, you can subscribe to us. Uh, there's a picture that's at the end of the video with me playing a guitar. And if you just click on that picture, it'll take you right to my subscribe button. And if you subscribe, then that'll help us out uh, to be able to uh, provide these videos for a long period of time uh, so that more and more people can be saved and be brought into the kingdom of God. So until next time, this is John with Everyday Bible Study praying that you have a great day.